YouTube, what's up? What's going on, Scrabbles? Talking to Milwaukee. And um, as you can see, I'm back at the uh, Lamplighter, uh, not too far from the campus end. Uh, I want to get with y'all, finally off the truck. Uh, I told a few people that uh, I would have some insight on my experience with uh, TNT. And this may be, a, you know, part one and part two. Um, so I do have a class to get to at 1.30. Um, and then another class at four, I believe it is. Um, so a little bit of a process once you get off, off the truck, um, and, and start your upgrade process. Uh, tons of classes, uh, not tons, but I got two today. I got, uh, Monday's a holiday. I think it's like two or three Monday and then Tuesday, it might be one more, uh, like 49 computer, uh, based training things I have to do online. So they keep you busy. A lot of stuff is uh, repetitive. It's the same. Um, and then some of it is new information. The driver's simulation lab was, was different, um, you know, backing up and stuff like that, different weather, uh, weather things you have to go through. Ooh, almost fell. Uh, so, TNT. <laughs> my, my trainer, uh, whew. My trainer was um, probably the most lazy human being I've ever met in my entire life. Um, from from day one, um, you know, uh, we we met at Millennium. He told me the truck number, and I got in the truck, and you know, he shows me how to log into Qualcomm. Literally, I lie to you not, that is the only training that he gave me the two months. I believe it was two months that I've been with him. Um, that first load we had, we left here. We had to go to uh, down Alabama, I think it was. And he was like, you're going to drive first. And we got a load coming out of uh, Alabama. And he sets the GPS and stuff like that and gets in the back, closes the curtains. And... That was it. So I'm like, oh, okay. Um, you know, nothing, no, no. Um, are you comfortable with this or are you not? What do you, what are you not comfortable? Do you have questions or none of that type of communication from this guy? Um, so the Alabama was, 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 was okay. It was straight shoot. Um, I think we switched sometime the next day. It was a Walmart. It was a uh, live unload, so we had to wait a while. Actually, we waited a good while. That next one was to Chicago. Um, right, well, right outside of Chicago, somewhere. Um, small yard. Uh, it was a drop and hook. Very small yard. So I'm driving. It's nighttime, and um, I'm trying to back into this this space, and it's between a line of trailers. So it's one of those where the trailers aren't perfectly lined up like down the road you know some of them are like this some of them are like this some of them are like that you know it's you know people just put them in there and, and the yard dogs i guess just left it like that i'm i'm like over an hour at this point trying to <clears throat> back this damn trailer in this spot to the point that i'd be like hey um not gonna say his name but you know but i'm like hey i'm having trouble do you want to come spot me make sure i'm doing this right or whatever the case is, you know what I'm saying? So he's like, yeah, just do what you can do and, and try to get in there. Just take your time, take your time. He's yelling out of the sleep, out of the bunk, you know? And I'm like, why won't you just get out and help? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, that I didn't understand. So it got so bad to the point I never got in the spot because I didn't want to hit nothing. So I was going to drop it in the middle of the yard. But I saw a yard dog and he was like, um, I was like, the security said not to go past this point or whatever with the trailers. He was like, man, don't worry about it. We own all this. Put it back there, but you have to back in there. So it was one of them things you had to come out, turn, and then back into where he told me to park. So I, I did that. Um, after that, I find the trailer that we're taking. And, you know, the, the crank handle, I guess, you know, was either loose or too tight. One of the ones where you constantly turn and turn and turn. And it got to the point, it's 45 minutes, I'm cranking on this thing, legs ain't going up. And I'm like, what the hell? I ended up hitting myself in the face. Thank God I had gloves on. Uh, I mentioned this in another video before. Um, 
And to the point that I, I got mad, you know, I was cussing and stuff. And, you know, I went for a 15 minute walk, just cool off. And I said, hey, I asked him again, I said, hey, which way is the crank thing? Because at this point, I'm, I've been turning, turning this way, turning, turning that way. And, you know, sometimes you just get frustrated and you be like, all right, let me start from square one. But I, square one just wasn't coming to me because I was frustrated. It happens. So I asked him. He said, yeah, you just got to turn it. And again, yelling out of the bunk. <laughs> Obviously, I know I got to fucking turn the damn thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> at this point, I'm like, whatever. Finally get the legs up, right? So we're going to New York. And... We get to that Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, where it kind of meets all up there at the same time. Um, and it's blizzard. Like, it means full-blown blizzard. Like, I'm like, where, where did this come from? Nevertheless, I couldn't see. <clears throat> so I dropped the speed down to like 15, 20 miles. I think at one point I was even going 10 miles because I could not see. I'm new at this. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't going to risk my life, anybody else's life, um, regardless of the other truck that's zooming by me and stuff like that. So I slow it down, and uh, I get through the blizzard or whatever, pick back up speed, get to a truck stop, and I say, hey, got to switch, got about two and a half hours left. He's like, why we got two and a half hours left? We should have been there by now. should have way um, enough time to get there. Um, <clears throat> so I said, well, he, he asked me how fast was it going. I said about 15, 20 miles an hour, so it's so, 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 so 10. He was like, well, what happened? And I'm like, I just drove through a blizzard. Like, you didn't feel the truck slowing down. You didn't, nothing woke you up to the point to ask you, hey, let me check on this guy, see what's going on. Like, nothing. So I knew from then I was on my own. Luckily, I, I've done research with, you know, I became friends with different uh, YouTube people. Uh, very, very helpful in situations where I needed help because I didn't have the help. <clears throat> um, and we got there so late that they made us wait 24 hours to the next day because um, we were like three and a half hours late for our appointment. So uh, another instance was we we're in California and we're going to leave Ontario to Petro. Everybody pretty sure y'all guys know that. And he's driving this daytime because I was only allowed to drive at night, uh, which, again, I don't care, but I feel it should be a mixture. But I'm the student. So. We're leaving, it's like 11, 12 o'clock. I go in, I say, hey, I'm going to go get some food. He's fueling up. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming back. And mind you, for those that are on my channel that, you know, don't know trucking, so the trailers are 53 feet. Uh, if you add the tractor, it's a little bit closer to 70-something feet, roughly. But 53 feet, keep that number in mind. So he says, uh, all right, I'm going to fuel up. Go get yourself something to eat. So I went in, brushed my teeth. Got some food. It was crowded in there, so it was a little bit of a line. So it was about, about 35 minutes. 35 minutes go by. Make sure I ain't late for the show. Um, 35 minutes go by. So I come back out. Got food in my hand. And I'm walking past the fuel pump to get back in the passenger side because that's, you know, he said he was driving his daytime. I ain't allowed to drive in the day. He said, hey, uh, can you do me a favor? I said, all right, well, yeah, what's up? He said, it's a couple pieces of wood in the back of the trailer. Can you just grab those and throw them away? So I processed what he said real quick. Like, I'm standing in, in, the, in the front of the truck, trucks going by, in and out, and I processed this, and it came to me that fast, all in that split second, and I realized that he walked 53 feet to the back of the trailer you have to unlatch open the door looks inside closes it latches it back and walks 53 feet back up to the front sees me and asks me to go back 53 feet to get the wood out of where he just came from to throw it away and i said this to him i said what sense does that make like why you just didn't get it while you were back there i it just didn't matter. He was like, oh, yeah, I guess I could have. You guess you could have? Uh, the other thing was that uh, the fact that he lived in Springfield. Okay, you got kids, your girls here, wife, whatever you want to call them. Every time we go coast to coast, he got to stop here. Like, he finds a reason to stop here. 
And then he'd be like, all right, we're leaving in the morning. Just want to stop here, you know, you sleep or whatever, 10 hour break. One time I think we did have to do a reset. Um, and then he'll just text me, uh, get some sleep. That's it, literally, get some sleep. And I'm like, what does that mean? You know, I had a conversation with him before. I'm like, yo, your communication is horrible. You you need to be a little bit more detailed of, of what's going on, especially when you have a student involved. You have to communicate what's going on. You can't just say, get some sleep or, you know, he'll give me a time and then it'd be like two, three hours later. I'm like, oh, I'm on my way. I'll be there in 20 minutes. So like one time he gave me time at two o'clock. He hit me at 430 and said he's going to be about there about 20 minutes. So he asked me, he said, you got anything for me? This is the first incident. I said, yeah, your communication is horrible. Like everything you're saying is like backwards or way off of, of what you are talking about. Like, and I said, you know, I come from a, a structured environment, you know, fire department. I will bring up fire department because it, it's structured. Training is structured. Like if you have, you're given a time by your instructor, you know, be back at this yada, 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 then you're there beforehand. And he has, he has no concept of time. Um, a lot of things, again, were, were vague. Everybody knows that when you stay at at the uh, the terminal, it, you can if you check in at a certain time, you stay 12 hours, or if you check in after 1045 or at 1045, you can have it till the next day. But either way, you have to make that decision because once you stay there, you can't stay there for 48 hours after. So that makes a big difference of whether you're going to go stay at the terminal or you're just going to come back to campus and get a room over here where there is no, you stay here until you're ready to go. He didn't understand none of that. And then the last one was, you know, get some sleep. I tried to get off the truck. I did. Uh, but because I came into this with a timeline, um, I um, it was going to be too, it was going to be too, um, it was going to extend the TNT longer than what it what I wanted it to be. Um, I didn't want to be on a truck um, till July or anything like that. Um, you know, I wanted to get this over with, and and I, I just dealt with it. You know what I mean? And it seems like the the fleet managers, um, unless you're physically fighting with someone, they're not going to change your trainer. They're not. So unless you're physically fighting with someone, or um, you just flat out be like, I'm not, I'm getting off the truck. I'm not doing this. Then, then, then obviously if you put them in the corner, um, then they'll make a change. But, you know, you can say that, oh, you know, he's mean or, or whatever the case that you want to think that you can complain, they're not going to change your, your trainer. So don't think of like, oh, if I don't like him, they're not going to change the trainer. Just it's one of the things that they're not going to do. Um, what else? What else? So everything I've learned. Oh, there was another situation, and uh, this is the this is the other one that you know is kind of important. So, reefer, you know, we got the control modules on the on the back of the units or front of the units, uh, and you know you have your set points. We was in Florida. We was doing a repower, so they were bringing us a trailer, and then we were bringing the trailer to California. So the trailer, we were we were at Auburndale, and we were there at least by I think it was the eight or nine at night. The trailer came at three o'clock and what I remember when the dude knocked on the door, said, your trailer's ready, here's your paperwork. I looked at my time, it was literally like 3 or something in the morning. So I go back to sleep, he says, okay, I'm gonna go back to sleep or whatever. He said, yeah, we're leaving sometime in the morning. Again, this sometime shit. All of a sudden around 7, 7.30, the alarm, I, the, you know, you get the stuff on your phone and it says check reefing unit, check reefing unit. And uh, so I, I, you know, look at the thing. It says something about the uh, set point was off. It was reading uh, 45 degrees, it's supposed to be 37 degrees. So, you know, I go, for one, you had to go look for the trailer. It's not a big yard, but I did have to walk around the building and find that. So I found it. I get to the screen. All the lights are lit up. The, the yellow, the purple, and it's the red lights on the screen. Everything is lit up. And it says the temperature is off or whatever, you know. So I go back to him. I said, I wake him up. I said, hey, the alarms are going off on the reefer. Um, how do you shut it off? Or, what, you know, what, what do you want to do, basically? Because, again, at this point, 
this, that happened like maybe three, four weeks ago. So we into this, and he still hasn't gone over reefer shit, like controls with me yet. And he says, uh, it's probably just the doors. So you need to close the doors, um, and then the temperature should, you know, regulate. So I'm like, all right. Well, are you going to get up and hook up and so we can close the doors? And he was like, just hook up and pull it from the building and close the doors. I said, no, I'm not allowed to drive during the day, remember? So you get your ass up and hook up so the alarms are going on. Meanwhile, the fleet manager's calling, calling me, calling him. And I'm like, uh, I told him, I don't know what you want me to do. I ain't allowed to drive during the day. That's why I said. So. It was stuff like that. It was real frustrating. Now, not to mind you, he's a, he's an absolute slob, um, disgusting, probably human, yeah, disgusting human being. Um, good thing I had my own cavi spray. Um, you know, hospital grade stuff that I spray stuff down after him and um, a lot of times before him. Uh, I don't. I don't understand this guy. And the crazy thing is he's not even like a, a mean or disrespectful person. It's just his work ethic is horrible. Um, and if you got, and, and this is my thing, I, I'm, I can understand if you have family stuff going on, if you have health issues going on, you need to get that stuff squared away. Uh, and until then, you know, stay away and, and then come back, you know. But if you don't want to take care of it, you don't need to have a student on your truck, bro. Like, that's, that's just not... It's not going to be conducive to nobody because your student's not going to learn nothing and you're going to be frustrated. Um, you know, the students on these trainers truck makes them a lot of money from what I'm told. Um, you know, this guy didn't even let me get love points to fuel up to, to you know, get my, my uh, gas card up uh, so we can get points and we get free showers and stuff like that. And he didn't even let me fuel up. One time he did and was nine gallons for the reefer. That's the only time that he let me use my love card. So, I, you know, I got hip to it. And I started, you know, it was the times where, you know, we would switch. And I look at his car. I mean, uh, you know, I go up to log in. And then he got four and a half hours left on his clock. Granted, we did a train. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I sucked it up, whatever. You know, I got up there, drove. Got us where we need to be safely. And uh, that was that. Um and thank God the other day, you know, we was doing this load and we got a call. And again, he was going to stop here in Springfield. But Steve, uh, Steve, my fleet manager, he called and said, uh, you know, you're eligible for upgrade and you can go uh, finish this load, check in the campus tonight. You're in class tomorrow morning at 7. And, and this is here I am now. So, uh, and I tried to get my stuff off this truck, man, so fast. And, and, and I just wanted to be done. And I was hoping he wasn't going to say nothing to me. Uh, and, you know, it was one of them things where, like, you know how, like, when you you leaving something or even you see on TV and then, you know, you see somebody in the background and they say, hey, and you look and you're like, fuck. I'm like, yeah. And I'm looking down. I'm like, please don't say it. Please don't say it. Please don't say it. And he said, hey, if you need anything, if you ever need anything while you're on the road, Feel free to give me a call. And I was like, damn, he said it. I said, if I need anything to do what? He said, yeah, I know how it might be when you first get out there. If you need anything, give me a call. I'm like, why would I call you? You haven't shown me shit. Like, why would I call you? I'm not calling you. I'm going to do what I've been doing and how I learned this whole time. I'm like, I'm not calling you for nothing. Like, you've shown me nothing. You didn't help me with nothing. And his girl, his wife, or whatever you want to call her, because he calls her different things every day. And she's standing there like, I'm like, yeah, I'm not, you're the worst person that I've ever met as far as training. Like, you're a nice guy, but training is not your thing, bro. Like, you do not ever need to do this again. Never. I gave him his key. I got my last bag. I walked to my car. And that was it. So, yeah. Um, you know, trainers, I... You know, students are here to, to learn, and um, you, you can't take this lightly. It, you know, we're driving, you know, a semi-truck. You, know, you can kill somebody, kill yourself very easily. Um, and, and to have a trainer that is not invested in teaching you 
at least the basics, safety wise, or you know, we didn't go over any type of safety, nothing. Like when I tell you I called people to help me and literally walked me through it on the phone, you know, text and sent me pictures of what their reefer look settings look like and where they actually press. You know, I'm a visual learner, so uh but I got the information, you know, I'm I definitely feel comfortable. Um you know, being out here, um, doing my classes now. So I'll be on the road. Um, I do have to get going, guys. Um, I got to take the shuttle over the plaza. I got to do some class auto, automatic, automated. Or I don't even know. But, but yeah, that was that was my TNT. So I am going to do a part two. That was 20 minutes. I don't want to make it too long. I'm going to do a part two. I'm going to do my uh, version of what I think. And, again, it's my opinion. I'm not saying it would be the right way. But I'm going to just give y'all a brief thing of what I envision, you know, TNT training should be and have an objective and where it should be, you know, things that should be covered uh, under TNT. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I didn't I didn't drop his name. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's, you know, I'm not trying to have somebody, you know, oh, that's you, that's you, that's you. I'm just strictly talking about my experience. I've heard um, other guys that I've met, their trainers, uh, TNT experience was either better. I've heard a few people it was even worse. Till we got physical altercations, um, or the the environment that was unhealthy. You know what I'm saying? Because people were absolute slobs. So that's enough of me ranting. 21 minutes, 22 minutes. Uh, it's the longest video I ever did, but I will get back to you. I got to go run right and test the shuttle, guys. Uh, I appreciate y'all support. Appreciate you listening to me. Uh, appreciate everybody. Hanging along for this uh, this journey. Um, follow me around. I try to check in where I'm at. Just to be like, where's Waldo? Where's Medlock? You know what I'm saying? So it's cool. Um, I'm loving it, though. Like this, you know, I'm ready to be on my own and, and start making money. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun so far. But, you know, aside from TNT. So, yeah, I got to get going. I'll get back at y'all with part two in a little while. Maybe today, tomorrow. Just depend on, you know, how tired I am. Appreciate y'all. As always, stay safe.